In industrialized nations, centralized generation is the standard means of producing electricity. Large, gigawatt-scale thermal power plants are located far from urban centers. Electricity generated from these plants is sent through a high-voltage transmission network. Then, lower-voltage distribution lines carry electricity to virtually every business, facility, and home in the country. This centralized generation model and the policies controlling it were built on early 20th century technologies and market needs. This begs the question, does this model still fit today's electricity needs, or is there something better? An alternative model is distributed generation. Distributed generation consists of relatively small power generation units, typically less than 30 megawatts, located at or near the point of consumption. According to the IEA, the growing interest in distributed generation is driven by five major factors. First, new materials and designs for photovoltaic panels, microturbines, engines, and fuel cell generation technologies, as well as advances in controls and monitoring, have improved the performance and extended the range of applications for distributed generation. New high voltage transmission lines are expensive and challenging to permit. Customer demand for liability has increased. Electricity markets have liberalized. And finally, concerns over climate change have created a pull for renewable energy technologies. Of course, distributed generation has both advantages and disadvantages. Distributed generation can be reliable. Waste heat can be utilized for cogeneration. Transmission and distribution losses are avoided. New high voltage transmission is not needed. Renewable use is expanded. Siding is easier. Fuel source can be flexible. And finally, distributed generation can be quickly built out, and capacity can be added relatively easily. Some challenges facing distributed generation include high electric costs compared with the grid, high capital costs, financial attractiveness differs from site to site, particularly for cogeneration and renewables, benefits are seen by the customer, not the utility, there are regulatory hurdles, the grid was designed to be a one-way street, so interconnection can be a problem, and finally, renewable power is intermittent and must be paired with storage or reserve generation to provide baseload power. As an example, through 30 years of cohesive policies providing subsidies and compulsory targets for distributed and renewable energy, today nearly 70% of Denmark's electricity comes from distributed generation. Here's Denmark's electric power infrastructure 1985. Notice the orange dots, which represent decentralized or distributed generation. Fast forward to 2009 and you can see the proliferation of distributed generation. As shown in Denmark, a country can achieve high penetration of distributed generation with today's technology coupled with strong policy. The benefits of this path include energy security, a nimble grid, and reduced emissions. However, to enable this future, a society must be willing and able to pay a premium for its electricity.